Our next game is Age of Empires 2, uh, developed by Ensemble Studios, and it was published by Microsoft. Back when published by Microsoft was actually kind of a good thing for PC games. It is an RTS, so it pretty much wasn't released on anything else, shockingly. I don't know. It, I think I, I might think have I heard it was on PS2, it. believe it or not. Really? It, it got ported to a... the Nintendo DS at some point uh, with some Interesting modifications. Though. Yes, it's not the exact version. We definitely played the PC, though. Absolutely yeah. played the PC version. It was nominated by at Neon Hench underscore Henchman and at Zarpolis. Uh, it was earliest release date is September 30, 1999. And it is a RTS that uh, is a follow up to Age of Empires 1. And I, I can't, this is one of those famous games that I'm pretty sure most people, or at least the name Age of Empires, should trigger something in your mind if you're a, a person who plays games be like yeah there's a franchise called that and it i guess it it does something it, uh, i kind of feel like it's in kind of like the third place of our uh, rts is compared to say uh warcraft slash starcraft and command and conquer i think you're giving command and conquer too much credit in the present day uh command yeah. and conquer really sort of tailed off kind of actually around this time i think around the age of empires 2 I think maybe the double hit of sort of Age of Empires 2 and StarCraft really crimped the uh, Command & Conquer franchise. That, and of course, EA bought the Westwood Studios and rammed that thing into the ground. They yeah. just... They Westwood, really burned that one down. <laughs> wow. I, I, I'd love to talk about that when we get to do a Command & Conquer related or yeah. Westwood thing, but boy, does it feel like EA would just... <laughs> I hate Westwood. Yeah. Buy them and destroy them. <laughs> See also Origin Studios. That was a shame. But yeah. this is the Age of Empires 2. It, sure it is, is an RTS set in... It's not entirely, like, accurate, I don't think, but it's just kind of medieval period. It's, it's a pastiche of, let's say, from about 793 to the conquest of Constantinople period of history uh, with some definite hand-waving. Uh, I, I do know a little bit of history, but not as clear, not as detailed as, as you have. The other thing is that this game just kind of arbitrarily, like, I believe Japan and China are in it, and they just yeah. use regular, like, weapons and they've they really work. hand wave a couple they do some things with the tech trees that i could get into about them that kind of acknowledge that they're a little different but they definitely hand wave some uh of the particularities of non-european cultures let's say i think some sibs like lose some technologies that others get like i think like i think japan doesn't get the wheelbarrow tech that lets you carry more stuff and move faster so yeah, it, the game does, it, it acknowledges by having a bunch of different civilizations, but it they all kind of share the same vaguely Eurocentric thing, which is fine. I You know, that's the way this game is built. It works just fine. Uh, and of course, the game itself doesn't really care because most of the levels you're going to play on are randomly generated hodgepodge maps. So yeah. it, Japan, Japan can be literally next to the British or something. So it doesn't really, it's just like, whatever. It's The Japanese race probably has samurai and the... Other races have other things. I'm sure the British have longbowmen or something. I might get a little confused because there are several games like Age Empires 2 that came out after this. Rise of Nations, Empire, Earth. There's a couple yeah. of others that kind of... They sort of blend together a little bit, but I think Age Empires 2 might have been the first one in that sort of field because yes. it was just following from Age of Empires. And Age of Empires was vaguely uh, Roman, Egypt, Egyptian themed, I think was... Yeah, that so, so Age created. of Empires was very clearly attempting to ape certain elements of civilization while also grafting some of what you would say at that point were like command and conquer mechanics onto it. Um, and even like, I don't I can cite specific reviews at the time, but it was just seen as this kind of staid thing uh, that didn't really have its own identity. Like Age of Empires 2, I think, succeeded far more. And I think, you know, that well, I there's think, a, I think one of the big things. Okay. Uh, about Age of Empires 2 to cut you off, sorry, no, 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 no. Uh, is that it's about knights and dudes in armor and castles. And yeah. It's just such like a like an obvious thing, but it's just like, it, what do you want? Uh, like knights and they get cannons and they hit things with swords. And it's like, cool, everyone likes that. Like, it's just such an easy sell. Like, you want to have swordsmen and stuff and they break castles and attack things. Like, cool. It's pretty dry compared to its competition. I mean, in like Warcraft, you guys make orcs have funny voices and they complain, click them a lot. Command and Conquer has the FMV of like this bald dude just hamming it up, and there's just it's very 
played straight kind of dry game, Age of Empires. So I, I can't argue with that a whole hell of a lot. I'm just, I'm like the target audience for this in a lot of ways. I started playing this game when I was probably, well, it came out when I was 11. So it was 11 or 12 when I got it for a Christmas and Boy, this game might, 12 year olds like people with swords. This might have been the reason that I wound up getting a history degree <laughs> in some weird <laughs> way. This and Shogun Total War, which I played probably even more of at the time, and then wound up Shogun playing. Total War, uh, very, very well done Total War. Cannot the... wait to talk about Shogun Total War someday. <laughs> uh, I wound up, And then I actually wound up playing at, when they came out Empire Earth and Rise of Nations. Not really an RTS fan, though. I like them as sort of pastiches of history and fiddling around with them in this kind of strange way um well i think like piggybacking on on bob's point this game is not for someone who thinks boy orcs and fantasy is awesome no it's not for you it's it's, it is not it's for people that like history but are not the kind of people that like clash of steel yeah i also think uh similarly it's also not necessarily for the starcraft crowd in the sense that starcraft seems to move at a lot faster clip, and I think AoE 2 is a little more stately in its uh, progression. Well, S- Starcraft is a game that you can, if you're playing <clears throat> pro level, sure. you, you can win or lose in two minutes. Yeah. It's just, you, you know, it might take five minutes to realize you've lost, but if you yeah. if something goes wrong in the first two minutes, that's it, game over, GG. Just, yeah, and there are you know, some gambits in AoE 2 that you can do, like the Teutons have a certain... There are some buffs that you can do where you can basically dump down a new town center next to an opponent's town center and just kind of eat them alive within like five minutes, but that's mostly a split against AI. But to kind of get into the things that make AoE 2 stick out, at least at its time, the tools baked into the game are actually sort of robust, I think. I think the game was fairly smart about stuff like when you cluster your units together, they tend to go into formations that make a certain logical sense without you having to micromanage constantly, which as a child was very helpful. So they'll tend to put your beefcakes up in front and kind of put your softer, lesser units kind of farther back. As you're throwing your uh, groups of units at other units, they tend to target, like, you know, weakest individual, or they tend to, like, do the rock, yeah, paper, scissor elements of those combats. Yeah, when your units are told to attack, they will actually kind of try and pick the counters that they're trying to take out yeah. instead of your entire wave of crosswomen attacking like the speedy units they can't really hit or whatever you know i do appreciate that it does make it a bit easier to get into i do want to say that the difficulty level feels a little bit uneven at times like i've had times where i've just had games i've been just trying to set myself up just get my resources ready and the ai just sends this unending army of guys i can never stop but the one time I streamed the game with Cal, I mean, they just barely even fought was, back. Uh, it's because I was there, and I totally helped you out there on, <laughs> on how to play this one. No, I I mean, uh, I, it's always difficult to judge AI in a, sort of an RTS game because it generally will either lose because it can never beat a human on even ground, or it will completely destroy you because it cheats like crazy because yeah. it's designed for someone who's incredibly pro and is just maximum tier at the game. So... I, I try not to judge you, and the AI is, is competent. You can have quite a few AIs at once. You can have large levels filled with lots of AIs. That's fun. Uh, that's that's cool. It, it, it sort of suits itself. Uh, you can see the edges of the AI, but it's it's fine. You could play this game online. It was very popular online yeah. in its day, and you can still get a game going today because it was relaunched on Steam in, like, a HD update. So that's cool. You know, this game still has a fan base out there that like it, and... I never wound up playing, like, competitive matches online, but what I did wind up playing, and this was even as, like, a... Even into my early teens, I was still playing this game. Uh, People made so many stupid, created lobbies for this game. Uh, I wound up playing several matches, and one is, like, a 13-year-old of, like, a remade, really crappy version of Helm's Deep, where it was, like, two or three players on a team inside of this giant fort with a king that they were guarding... And, like, four or five teams arrayed outside is just basically mobs of low-level units trying to go in and crash. Like, just ridiculous crap that, as a... Like, it was kind of my introduction to stupid PC hackery and mods and bullshit. So, I don't know. I have a lot of sentimental crap tied into this game, unfortunately. Uh, But, but yeah, the, the scene around this game lasted for a pretty long time. And it ran pretty well over crappy internet, I will have to say. Uh, we probably did not have more than 56k growing up, and I never recall having any real connection problems. Uh, that's one so of that's the for advantages something. of uh, this kind of game, because this is not a uh, micro-heavy game. Uh, StarCraft mm-hmm. and 
uh, Warcraft 3 and, you know, that line of games. They are, like, super micro-heavy. You have units with a bunch of abilities that you got to activate all kind of at once at different times and all against different things, and you've got to manage all of your stuff. Uh, this game is a, definitely a little bit more macro. You just kind of set things in motion, and then when you finally decide to send an army in, you just kind of send an army in, and you just sort of kind of pull units around and do what you need to do, and it's not really... You know, it's more of a grand strategy than a kind of micro-level yeah. strategy. One thing, it does have kind of a slow pace. There's, like, so many different types of resources you just need to, like, slowly gather up and slowly upgrade your people until you think that you're good enough to actually fight, and that can take some time. It's so you do have stately. to be pretty patient. Yeah. And it's, it's not the slowest one around, though. Uh, you know, something like the Civilization games, obviously, because they're turn-based. This was much faster than those. This was just like, people want to play Civilization, but they don't have the eight hours per game. Let's give them something faster. And that's what Age of Empires 2 was trying to... And Age of Empires 1, to an extent, was, was trying to pull off that. And, and it's a great... It's a little yeah. sequel that no one really talks about, because... Uh, mm. And, you I, know, even even Rise of Nations, which was kind of, I think, to a lot of people, the real next step. It is Ex to me. Age of Mythology being kind of this interesting spinoff. When they went with a sequel for that, they kind of went nonlinear and made Rise of Legends afterwards. Boy, like, was uh, Rise of Legends just the hottest game to get around. I Sorry, we're going to talk yeah. about a bunch of different RTSs. But, sure. Uh, well, I mean, Rise like, we haven't talked a lot was... about RTSs on here, so no. let's, we give a, some sort of framework for them. I'm glad that someone gave us an RTS yeah. to, uh, to look Particularly at. Particularly this uh, one. Thank you very much. <laughs> but yeah, this uh, this genre burned itself out a little bit. Yeah. Just people, I, I, I guess maybe this game just did it so well. Uh, I, it actually probably is closer to uh, the Total War franchise just destroyed this kind of game. Um, and I, I think is it it sort of took the battle component and made the battle component more interesting to players, yeah. but also kind of kept this grand, like it gave a grand strategy closer to civilization. That's the genius of, I think, the Total War games is sure. they went, all right, well, people that want to play StarCraft are going to play StarCraft. People that want to play Civilization are trying to play Civilization. Let's do what we want to do and sort of cram it together in a way that actually works surprisingly well. Age of Empires wasn't trying to be StarCraft, but you have to actually want to play a real-time strategy game, which isn't always appealing to the same general audience uh, that are looking for a historical game, because it it fails to feel... The diplomacy in this game isn't good, and I think oh, that that's yeah. one of the things that, it's, uh... that lets it down a little bit, because it just does kind of feel like an elimination game, with a medieval sort of gloss of paint over it, whereas something like Rise of Nations, which is one of my personal favorite RTSs, uh, that game does actually have a lot of diplomacy going on. You can actually negotiate your way around. There's borders and all this cool stuff uh, that makes Age of Empires, to me, seem a lot quainter because it's yeah, it like, really does feel like a historical reskin. One thing, there are ways to win without, like, just killing everybody, but it doesn't really feel like that's the most ideal thing to do. Yeah. It does feel a lot more focused on the combat, which I guess is fair for an RTS, but... Yeah, so you can wind up... There's and there's actually a whole separate game mode of, like, there's this regicide, so you can have this, like, incredibly squishy character you wind up defending the entire time while you attempt to play an RTS around him. Uh, and then one of the other win conditions is basically you build this incredibly expensive item, uh, a wonder that is uh, unique to every civilization, uh, which both of them are kind of turtling strategies in a different way, but th they aren't particularly fun. I, I mean, and Tur I, turtling someone... is usually not fun for the people that are kind of trying to play against turtling because it's just kind of you throw your soldiers against each other and then it's like, OK, cool. Yeah. Just keep doing that until you someone wins because they had more production. This game has walls. I want to mention that because yeah. this is, as far as RTSs go, this is one of the most sort of, it has walls that maybe actually do something. Uh, the Almost every other RTS with walls, walls are just, they're like paper, paper walls that you don't really, you build them and then your enemy destroys them and it's like, well, that was a waste. Yeah. That was a no, they're, big they're ass waste. They're period appropriate uh, pains in the asses and you uh, eventually you'll develop siege weapons that'll work around it. So I think the tech tree in this game, so it's an RTS game that actually has a pretty substantial tech tree for its time. 
that, as we mentioned, has certain elements lopped off as uh, were deemed culturally appropriate by the uh, folks who made this title. So th- there are basic kind of rock, paper, scissors decisions that are being made, but they it's sort of rock, paper, scissors, but if you had about 37 different options that were stapled onto it, uh, even down to like, so when your main base, which is kind of based around like a town center gets invaded, uh, early in the game, you can ring a bell, uh, which will draw in all of your random, like, uh, what did you just call them? mooks, like uh, villagers in, yeah, and uh, they'll just start is. shooting at the invaders. And you can buff that ability over time uh, up your tech tree, uh, such that turtling in your town center is actually kind of a useful tool for, like, the first third of a game. And it makes you sort of, like, rush strategies kind of become a little more risky. Just like, uh, you know, there's like a thousand other little steps like that. Up to one of my favorite things late in the game, uh, you can pay a significant amount of money to turn individual enemy villagers in another town into spies... Or if you're playing the regicide version, that 200 gold will turn one of the enemy villagers into a, an assassin who will try to go and murder the other king. Um, <laughs> and you can counter that by effect basically just having a lot of villagers at any time. Because then it becomes prohibitively expensive for someone to drop down like thousands of gold to, you know, slowly go and convert all of your villagers into, uh, you know, turncoats or whatever, Benedict Arnold's. I don't know. I think it's cool. this it's game cool holds stuff. up pretty well. There, it's clear, like, it's been outpaced. I think Rise of Nations really outpaced it, and that was, Jesus, 13 years ago. <laughs> I, 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 like, I don't play a lot of RTSs, and I've kind of actually gotten out of strategy games in this way that kind of bums me out. There hasn't been, like, RTSs as a genre have really done not well uh, in the past, past five or six years. Yeah. Uh, there's just been a severe dirge in them. And I, I don't think it's because, I think it's because people haven't really bought them. I don't know how many copies Grey Goose sold, but I don't think it did all that well. Would you just for... say they've, like, been placed, replaced with, like, MOBAs and such? I think they have. Uh, I think like, it's I... definitely a big component of it. But I think that's a very real phenomenon. Uh, but I also think that... the, I mean, StarCraft 2 is kind of the only real game in town, in a way. Isn't it? Anything As else I said, is... the, the only other game that came out that I know of that was a big name was Grey Goose. Like, that was the only other yeah. big RTS. Uh, I think they keep making Total War games, but they're kind of, again, a different yeah. genre I, in I a way. I just think they're so different, they don't even really count. Like, Because they do have that grand strategy element that really differentiates them in a way. And, like, you know, it's hand-wavy and not particularly well thought out and hasn't been for a long time. I had a lot of problems with Rome 2. Uh, but, like, they're, they're quite different. I just don't see them as even really comparable. Yeah, like I think Company of happened, Heroes, maybe, maybe Company of Heroes Two. A lot of these games, I, I think people that like the RTS games, uh, they like certain elements, and MOBAs deliver on those elements that they liked. And then the grand strategy people always prefer a grand strategy games, so yeah. they just kind of shifted back to that kind of game. Yeah, it's like like Endless Legends is very cool, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not delivering the same thing. Anyway, when yeah. we're talking about Age of Empires 2, and I guess we should try and rank this one. I think so. This um, is going to be tough, because we have, like, no reference points. Um, it I will mean, become the reference point, yeah. essentially. So, the challenge with this one is, Age of Empires 2 is quite was quite popular in its day. It's quite popular to date. Uh, the, the catch with this one is, I'm not really sure... Okay, StarCraft, for... <laughs> Uh, for it, it's impossible to ignore came out before this game right now starcroft is undeniably a pretty big watershed of uh, rts games like you can't argue i think around that it's a hugely influential hugely important game especially since you know they made one other starcroft yeah and it was like like okay, it, cool. like i think people eventually stopped playing age of empires 2 but i don't think you can actually say that about original starcraft even today like, I, I think it has slowly tailed off, but, like, it's still played. So, uh, yeah, I... My... It, it gets used a lot for things that are even loosely strategy on this list, and I feel dirty doing it, because I just don't think they're really comparable, but... Advance Wars 2. I think it is an, a better strategy-aligned game than Advance Wars 2, for certain. In terms of putting it much higher on this list, I... No, I think I put it above Super Mario Land. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's I don't the know thing. If it, uh, hmm. 
it is a it is a very like it's it's a pretty important game, but it was kind of it was basically overridden by a lot of the the games because a lot of RTSs in this period, when you were able to make games kind of bigger, because mm-hmm. this game wants to be bigger and it can't be bigger because it's a 1999 game. Starcraft sort of sat and said, "We don't really need to make this any bigger because we kind of perfectly built the game to fit the exact criteria of what we have." Whereas you know, grand strategy games were like, well, we want more units, we want more tech trees, we want more uh, stuff on screen, we want more races and civilizations, you know, we keep pumping them larger. So Age of Empires 2 is unfortunately this middle ground where it's better than Age of Empires 1, but there's a lot of games after it that were just like, well, but we're better. We're just going to come in there and make it better. I do think uh, around that general vicinity, uh, the Super Mario Land vicinity, is I think, I think is pretty solid. I... I don't think I could put it above, like, our type. It just yeah. feels... Just, like... No, yeah. I think I'm right there, honestly. But one thing um, we gotta keep in mind, just real quick, mm-hmm. we gotta think of somewhere to place it where we know where we can, like, have buffer for any other RTSs we might get. Oh, don't worry. I'd put Rise of Nations uh, above a lot of things on this list. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I think, I think it's good. I do wonder if I would put it below Descent, though. Because Descent is kind of a much like Descent is kind of a wholesale unique first person weird flighty labyrinthian game uh, Age of Empires 2 feels like it's a transition point between a lot of games that it's just kind of like yeah we're the best show in town for the next year and a half or so so get in everyone get yeah. in while yeah. we're still the best show in town it is an iteration uh, and Descent is certainly full disclosure I am like Two degrees removed from someone who made Descent, I discovered recently. Descent is more than three-dimensional doom. Yes, uh, I really mean, that's yeah. that's an important part of uh, the Descent game. I I don't want to sell Age of Empires too short, but pushing yeah. it a lot higher would be very difficult. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I don't think it's... You know, I'm going to save my ammo for a couple other <laughs> games of this ilk which uh i'm pleased to discover i'll have at least one person on my side um so i the, I, the, I would i could live with it below descent okay um, i you have a strong opinion about this i i no i think right below it. descent is, yeah. is pretty good i i think it's a it's a worthwhile game um it's just being overshadowed by games that are going to get put higher than it Absolutely. and that's it's always tricky for us to place these things that we know they know that it's gonna get other things but yeah I guess because Age of Empires 2 especially, it does feel like a stopgap, and it feels like a lot of other games would come along and really try and work its own formula better. I, even if it was something like Age of Mythology, which takes Age of Empires and then kind of adds all these like twists and mechanics to it and extra stuff, it's like, wow, you've really, you really cranked out like your own ideas. You've carved your own game in here that I can really get the feel for. Age of Empires just feels like yeah, you took Civilization and you made it real time, and that's really cool. And it's probably better than Call to Power, which doesn't work all that well in a lot of ways. It doesn't have a great single player. I know that's not the best criticism when well, it comes to an RTS, but a lot of RTSs at this time did try. They were yeah. like, "Well, we'll put a good story mode in, and we'll do our best." And Age of Empires is is very much no. Get online, get your 56k modem, and go online because yeah. there are some we're campaigns baked in, and they're passable. The sort of limitations in terms of civilizations. I do like that all the civilizations, I think they have different building types. Like, they they look different. Yeah, I know so there's, like, a... four different skins. Uh, the, yeah. the the really cool thing is that every uh, civilization has their own language track. Uh, so even as a child, I knew how to say, um, basically, I'm a lumberjack in what amounts to, like, Icelandic. It's Timbro Fante. Like, that's cool stuff, and I, I appreciate it. But Below Descent is cool with me, and so that's where it'll be. 